Okay, so welcome everybody to the BioYouth uh, Q&A on blood pressure today. Um, I am Mary Sheila Ganella, I'm a board certified holistic nutritionist, um, Ayurvedic practitioner, and uh, a lover of all things nutrition, um, and uh, part of BioYouth Labs which is a supplement company that you have likely purchased from. So thank you. And, you know, we are definitely more than just a supplement company. I think of supplements as they are a supplement to everything else we do, which is what we eat and how we live our life, how we manage our stress, um, how we move our body. So in the today's video or Q and A, um, I want to talk about blood pressure and in, and then also answer any questions that you might have along the way and hope that we can, this can maybe be the beginning of more calls like this that help to answer your question. I feel like in the last few years, it's a gift that there is so much information out there for us to be able to learn from and answer own questions and and see what works for us. And it can also feel overwhelming because there is so much information and so many different opinions. Um, and not that, you know, I'm right and it's my way or the highway, but I have been studying nutrition for over 15 years now. And I also have been a teacher of nutrition at a nutrition college and been in private practice for just about as long. So my hopes is just that I can help to educate you and steer you in the right direction and just help you to answer any questions that you have. And anytime I teach a class, I always like to begin with a um, hope that in this time that we have together, that you are able to uh, get something from this time together. So whether it's you know, I always call it like the pearl in the oyster. What pearl in the oyster can you take with you? What aha, or what is it something that I say or a question somebody asks that really resonates for you that you can say, okay, you know what? Like, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that on and do that and see how that feels. And then that way um, you can start to restack the dominoes, right? Because we're always, having to kind of course correct on our path. Um, and I think it's important to know, it's not just sometimes we will start to do something in our life, we'll make a change and it might feel amazing. But then we also might realize that there might be, um, after a while, maybe it doesn't feel so amazing. So we need to course correct. So it's always, life is about listening to what our body's telling us. And hopefully we are hearing that. And it starts as a whisper and it could end in a megaphone and take us down and we have to really course correct. But hopefully we can continue to course correct and we can learn about what our body needs, how to feed it properly. Because we know that we're not getting that same information out there from the marketing that is bombarding us. Because a lot of the marketing is wanting us to eat foods that are very detrimental to our health and that can add up over time. So... That is my goal today is to share with you in today around blood sugar or blood pressure, excuse me. Um, and I want to say at the end of the call, I'm going to have some special offers for you. So stick around for that. Um, and uh, yeah, and with and that being said, I'm going to get started. And if you uh, have questions as I go, um, you can throw them down in the chat. I'll probably get into my teacher flow teach my, the five remedies for blood pressure. And then I will look at your questions down below. And because we're on a Zoom and it's not a webinar, if you have questions, you wanna unmute and, and we can talk about it, that's wonderful. Um, and we'll go, we'll do it that way as well. And uh, actually there's one thing that I do need to say just to get us uh, as we get rolling and let me just, um, get my, my script for this actually. Um, sorry, but
but I do need to just say that the information that I'm presenting today is not medical advice. It is just the sharing of information from uh, my research and the teachers that I've trained with over the years. And so any recommendations that I make, you can always check with your doctor and your health team to make any changes. So just saying that I am not a doctor, I am sharing information with you today. So I'm honored and grateful that you're here to share that information. And we're talking about blood pressure. Now, blood pressure is um, something we can measure in the doctor's office, or sometimes we have our own blood pressure cuff. And there's two numbers. Um, the first number is called our systolic blood pressure that measures the pressure um, in your arteries when your heart beats. And then the second number, the bottom number is the diastolic blood pressure. And that measures the pressure in your arteries when your heart rests in between beats. So high blood pressure is the common condition in which the force of the blood against your artery walls is high enough that it could eventually cause health problems such as heart disease. Now, while blood pressure medications can assist uh, the body in lowering it, um, it's also about what we do in our day-to-day -day life to support those healthy levels, how we live our lives, what we eat, when we eat, how we move our body, our stress levels, those all make a big difference. And you know, the unfortunate thing is that when we go to see our doctor, uh, there's not enough time in the visit. You know, It's a 20 minute visit and they might say, you know, you should eat better and exercise more. And you're like, well, what does eat better mean? <laughs> and what, what kind of exercise should I do? And so the drug is kind of the quickest and easiest uh, remedy, right, that they can give you because it, it can help lower your blood pressure, but it, there's also could be side effects. I've had a lot of clients who get maybe persistent coughs and low energy, and then, you know, it depletes other vitamins and minerals in the body. And so then they get effects from that. So taking a pill can have a domino effect, but so can making natural you know, everyday changes in our lives can also make an effect. So when we're talking about blood pressure, the thing I always like to talk, anytime I'm talking about blood, I talk about blood sugar a lot, which I'll talk about today, very connected to blood pressure. But when I'm talking about blood, blood, I always have to step back and say that our bodies are 70% water and blood and lymph, 70% liquids. So our planet is 70% liquid and so are we. So when we're talking about blood, we're talking about a big percentage of who we are, right? Just like we know how important clean water is, clean oceans, because it's so much of the earth's ability to sustain life is because of water. And it's just like us, we wanna have good clean waters, right? Running through healthy riverbeds, right? Our, uh, our vessels and our veins. And so when we have blood pressure issues, it's like the vessels are pressurized, right? There could be inflammation, there's, there's more pressure, right? And we don't wanna have that extra pressure. And that means the heart is gonna be working harder for that excess pressure, right? And so we wanna support our waterways. We wanna support that system so that it can work with ease. And that way our energy goes to other places in the body. And so our heart is pumping the blood and our kidneys are filtering the blood. So there's this whole exchange between our lungs and our breath and our heart exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide and then the blood filtering through the kidneys, right? So oftentimes, you know, blood pressure, there's like a primary kind of blood pressure and there's a secondary. And sometimes secondary is when there's maybe kidney damage or adrenal issues. It's very specific and it might be very sudden. But primary hypertension, primary high blood pressure usually is a gradual increase. And it does, it is sort of like the wear and tear of our diet and lifestyle. And so the kidneys play a role and so does the liver because our blood is constantly flowing through our liver. So we're kind of looking at these organs that are shuttling our blood, our waters throughout the body. And we want to be protective or we want to be supportive of all of those organ systems 
to support blood pressure. So we're looking kind of like at a bigger picture. So the first natural remedy, and, and I just want to premise this with, you know, I might be saying things you're like, well, I already know that. <laughs> I know, I know. Like we, I always say as a nutritionist, I do tell people things that they already know. Like they've been living in their bodies their whole lives and they know that um, they are, uh, you know, we know kind of foods that work for us, foods that don't. Even if we don't know all of it, there's things that we do know, right? We know like, oh, that doesn't make me feel that good even though I crave it and eat it sometimes, right? Or staying up late all night, like, even though I binge watch sometimes or whatever, like doesn't make me feel so good, but I do it. So I might tell you things you already know, but are you doing them? That's the question. So the first thing I want to say is just looking at that, that those waterways in the body. One of the most important things that I think a lot of times we might not be doing, and I know, I know this just because I work with a lot of clients and then probably more than 50% of the time people are like, yeah, I could be better is our hydration, right? We want to drink water. I know there's a gazillion options and cans and bottles of everything under the sun and sparkling and this and that, but just plain old simple H2O water is going to support our waterways to keep moving, right? We might think, oh, well, high blood pressure, there's too much. No, it's just things are pressurized. And water is like kind of a cooling agent, just like we put water on a fire. It is a cooling agent. It helps things to move along. It helps to maybe thin the blood if it's thickened. And I'm not talking about drinking too much water because there is such a thing, but I'm talking about drinking enough water that is going to be supportive of your uh, cardiovascular system, of, of your waters moving through the body. And I'll just bring this point because I think this is like one of the, you know, one of those pearls that I got once and maybe this can even continue to become a pearl for somebody that you know right now or yourself or whatever. But when I was a teacher at the nutrition college, I had a student who was a retired oncology nurse. And she said, you know, when people are going through chemo and treatment, the main thing that we're doing is we're checking their kidney function because the chemo is like very toxic to the body. We have to make sure the kidneys can handle it. She said, but the people that handle the it the best and have the best outcome are the people that focus on hydration. And again, I'm not talking about drinking like a gallon or more per day. I'm just talking about even the general recommendation, which we can argue about, but which is like eight glasses a day, right? So be like two quarts of water a day. That is usually enough water to keep things moving and support the, the, the kidneys in its job of filtering and support the blood flow of not becoming too thick, right? So water really is life. When it comes to water though, like a great way to make sure that you're getting enough hydration is wake up in the morning and drink like a glass or two, you know, eight to 16 ounces. Probably not ice cold because <laughs> you've just woken up, but like warm tea, you know, warm water, hot water, maybe water with a little bit of lemon or lime in it, you know, get your hydration going first thing in the morning. That way, if you're like, I'm, I'm going for, you know, two quarts, you're already like a quarter of the way into your goal for the day before it, you know, before the sun has practically risen. That's going to support the body in getting everything to flow. Because when we have been sleeping through the night, we're a little more dehydrated. We're a little bit more acidic and water is going to alkalize and get our waters internal waters moving. We've been laying down. So we're kind of more stagnant. So we're, we're getting everything moving. And the warmth is really great too, because warm water is going to move more easily in the body than the ice cold, right? So hydration is a way to support the kidneys. So you want to drink first thing in the morning. You also want to focus your hydration in between meals so that you're not diluting your digestive juices. So a lot of times too, I, I notice that people think of and remember to drink water when they are eating. It's like, oh, I'm eating and I'm gonna get a big glass of water and maybe it has ice in it or some other kind of liquid. But we do wanna limit our water intake or, or, or any kind of uh, liquid intake with our meals to like maybe four ounces. So maybe just half a cup and drink in between meals, right? And something happens when we do that. When you start to focus that way, you also start, um, uh, like um, you also start eating less in between meals, right? And that's good for blood sugar balance, which I'm gonna talk about again. So we wanna make sure that our waters are 
thin and moving, and that's going to take a little pressure off the heart and the kidneys, and that's going to be a good remedy for blood sugar balance in general, uh, blood sugar, blood pressure balance, sorry. Okay. So the next thing that I want to share with you as a natural remedy is the role of vitamin D. Okay. So vitamin D has been kind of like the, you know, the, the vitamin, the fat soluble vitamin that we've been talking a lot about in the last year and a half, especially in response to COVID, because we know it is immune support. It's an immune booster. And so having enough of it is protective and it supports the immune system in fighting off any kind of virus or bacteria or anything like that. It also helps with bone health. It helps with gut integrity, keeping our gut from being leaky. It is uh, just very supportive on a lot of levels um, in the body, more than we know. It kind of acts like a hormone. And when blood, when we have enough vitamin D, um, it is helpful because it suppresses a certain uh, a molecule the body makes called renin, and that's an enzyme that promotes the activity of a blood pressure raising protein known as angiotensin. So if we have too much of that, that means that we might, uh, it could raise our blood pressure. So vitamin D, I mean, it acts like a regulator in the body, like with the immune system, it's almost like the conductor, like we have a few branches of the immune system and it's like the conductor going, okay, you know, you all play together, you play this note, and you play this note, and everybody plays together, it sounds wonderful. And we don't have enough vitamin D, we don't have a conductor. And so suddenly, you know, the violins are over there going rogue, and then the horns are doing their thing, and it doesn't sound good. And that's the same thing. And that's a perfect example with, you know, the, the role vitamin D plays with um, blood pressure is if we don't have enough of it, it's not going to produce the molecules that keep certain, uh, you know, molecules that we make ourselves in their place they start going rogue and then our blood pressure can raise. And so it's very easy to, and you know, easy on a lot of levels, but it's easy to say to your doctor, hey doctor, can you please test my vitamin D levels? Um, it's very standard. They shouldn't like charge your insurance. And if you are low and you have insurance, they'll even give you a prescription that likely your insurance will pay for to take the vitamin D. Um, getting sunshine on a daily basis is also a great way to get vitamin D. And it's not about like, you don't have to be in the sun for eight hours. It's like 20 minutes. You know, if you can get 20 minutes of exposure, even like maybe without your sunglasses so that the light can kind of come into your eyes, that's a place where we absorb it and, uh, exposing as much of your body as you can without, um, you know, just exposing, getting midday sun, like 20 minutes. That's about all you need. And if you start getting regular sunshine, um, that's a great way to get vitamin D and you can take vitamin D as a supplement. You can also eat like fatty fish for vitamin D and there's a, and even mushrooms have a little vitamin D in them, but you definitely want to get um, sources of, or, or make sure you're getting enough vitamin D, make sure you have enough, make sure you're above the you know, the level, a lot of functional doctors will say anywhere between 50 to 80 is a great way to be. It's going to protect your immune system, support healthy bones, and also support blood pressure. So that's a nice, you know, go get some sunshine. That's a good natural remedy, right? The other, um, the next natural remedy I want to share with you, this is number three. So first we talked about getting enough hydration and then getting vitamin D. So getting outside is, um, and this is an interesting one, is, uh, you know, there's a possibility that sometimes blood pressure can be elevated because of food allergies. So what happens when you eat something that you're allergic to? So for example, let's say I eat something, let's say I eat gluten. We all know gluten as an aller possible allergen. Let's say I eat gluten on a regular basis. What happens, what, and, and I have an allergy to it. What happens is I eat the gluten and I have an immune response. If, it, if I have a true allergen, it's an immune response. Now, 70% of my immune system lies in my gut. So that means I'm gonna have an immune response probably as soon as I eat it because my immune system is gonna be like, whoa, there's that gluten again. And I'm going to release immune molecules. That Anytime I'm releasing immune molecules, that's inflammatory. I'm having an inflammatory response. 
So then I'm gonna have these antibodies going after the gluten, which is considered an antigen. And I'm also going to have cortisol is going to release from my adrenals because they're helping me with this immune threat. The gluten is this big threat. And then I'm gonna have excess fluid come to the area to help move everything along, right? Through my rivers, through my lymphatic system. And so that creates more pressure. That creates more pressure. So as an example of one of my friends who is also a nutritionist, she does a cleanse with her, with a little group of her clients and her husband always does it with her. And he is on high blood pressure medications. And every time they do the cleanse, his blood pressure, as she says, kind of plummets and goes down. And, and so that is a, is a clear sign that he likely is allergic to something that he's eating. But when he does this cleanse and he cleans up his diet, he feels better uh, or his blood pressure goes down. And it's funny because she was like, well, I don't think he wants to change anything though, because <laughs> You know, he doesn't want, he, he likes being on the cleanse, but then he likes not being on the cleanse. So I'm not sure if they ever got to the root cause of that, but that would be what you'd want to do. So what is that possible allergen, right? So some of the main allergens that people react to, and it's different for everybody, but they, it is going to be gluten. For some people, it could be dairy. For some people, it could be eggs. For some people, it could be nuts or even soy or peanuts, maybe even corn. So those are the top ones, which sometimes when I tell people that they're like, well, what am I supposed to eat, right? But those are the main ones. And ultimately what you'd wanna do is just, um, you know, if you're like, well, I don't eat any of those except I can't live without, <laughs> whichever one that is, that could be a good one to eliminate. And you can always eliminate it and you can even monitor your own blood pressure and see if you notice a shift going down. And what's exciting is that, let's say you are on a medication or maybe you're not, and you're monitoring your own blood pressure and you are making dietary and lifestyle changes. Maybe you're experimenting with removing some foods that are possible allergens and you start noticing that your blood pressure is lowering a little bit. Then what you could do is you could then go to your doctor and say, hey, look, you know, I'm making these changes, look at my numbers. And then together with your doctor, they might say, wow, that's impressive. Let's lower your blood pressure medication. And then you start lowering it and you know what I mean? So it's not something, you know, it's something that you start to take initiative in your own life. Then the changes that you make, because if you are on a medication, you can be like, okay, you know, Here's where I've been making changes. What do you think? And then together you work out a new plan because it doesn't always, you know, anytime we go on any medication or supplement or special diet, it doesn't mean it's forever, right? Sometimes we can pivot and shift, right? Based on where we, our health is today. You know, and you might be maybe watching your blood pressure go up and your doctor's like, well, if it goes up anymore, we're going to have to start you on a medication. And then you might, then all of a sudden make some changes and start seeing a downward trend, right? So experimenting with food elimination is a really great way to go when it comes to blood pressure. And the other, um, the next thing I wanna talk about is the connection that blood pressure has on blood sugar. So for me, when I first started to learn about blood pressure, as a risk factor. Um, I learned about it in the lens of something called metabolic syndrome. Sometimes we call it syndrome X, but it's basically has to do with insulin resistance, which is when we can't um, break down, we can't utilize um, sugars as well. And we become resistant to our own insulin production um, to high triglycerides, which would be a fatty liver that lives in metabolic syndrome, high cholesterol numbers, which lives there, and high blood pressure, which lives there. So again, if we think about blood sugar, blood sugar moves through our, you know, the sugars move through our bloodstream, our 70%. So if that is off, that means that's gonna be flowing through the whole system being off, right? And 
same thing with blood pressure. When blood pressure is off, we know that that whole system, right? So that is very connected. And so blood pressure and blood sugar really intertwine. And so one of the things that can happen if we have diabetes type two or insulin resistance, what happens is if the sugar stays in our bloodstream for too long, because we cannot uptake the sugar molecules into our cells because we are resistant to our insulin, which basically is like we eat food, like some carbs, let's say I eat some beans or bread or pasta or root vegetables or something like that. And I eat that food. And once the food leaves my digestive tract and goes into my bloodstream, my blood sugar starts to rise. And my, my body notices and my pancreas releases insulin. Insulin is like an escort, it says, hey, sugar, grabs the sugar, takes it to the cell and insulin has a key. Insulin unlocks the door and lets the sugar into the cells for energy. Now, if I have insulin resistance, diabetes, prediabetes, it means my insulin goes to the door and it's like, oh my gosh, my key doesn't work anymore. So sugar stays in the bloodstream for longer. Okay. Eventually it's going to go to the liver. The liver is going to convert it to fat and store it for later. And that's sometimes when we see like high triglycerides or fatty liver. So the liver, so the, the sugars hanging around, strolling through the bloodstream starts to stick to our red blood cells. That makes our blood thicker. So suddenly our blood is more like honey instead of water. That's what's called in high A1C. If you've ever gotten an A1C test and it's elevated, it's gonna say, oh, that's an indication of diabetes, but that's really an indication of thick honey-like blood, thick blood. So that thick blood is going to be moving through and guess who has to pump honey instead of water? Your heart. So that is gonna create a lot more pressure. Right, So there's a the connection between high levels of blood sugar becoming a blood pressure issue, okay? So we have to pay attention to our blood sugar and our carbohydrate intake and kind of all of our food intake and even our ability to move and all of that. So, so we know that if we can naturally pay attention to and lower our blood sugar, that's going to positively affect our blood pressure. So in this natural remedy around connecting those dots, um, I mean, there's so much that I could say, but number one is I know that craving sugar is like, the real deal. And that's often why we eat it. We don't always want to eat it. We don't always wake up in the morning and be like, I'm going to have that whole bar of chocolate. We think I'm not going to have any chocolate, or I'm just going to have one little piece, or I'm not going to have dessert tonight, or I'm not going to. And then next thing we know is we eat the whole bar of chocolate, or we had the dessert and we're like, gosh, I wasn't going to have dessert tonight. Right? Like cravings are a real deal. So let's talk a little bit about just a couple things around blood sugar. One is going to be like, make sure that you have a protein with each meal. Okay. Whether it's a lean animal protein or vegetarian protein, you just want to make sure what, however you like to eat, whatever works for you is you want to have protein with each meal and healthy fats, whether that's like nuts and seeds or, you know, oils, avocado, you know, there's a lot of ways to get fats, but you want to have healthy proteins and fats at each meal, because that really helps to stabilize our blood sugar. And then we want to really pay attention to how much sugar we're eating. So ultimately, if we can get rid of the white refined sugars and even like processed foods, because even if you eat like salty chips, that's still going to turn into sugar instantly in your body. So we want to eliminate those sources. And to be honest, like the best way to get to eliminate those is to get them out of our houses. <laughs> I will eat chips if they are in my cupboard, you know, but I will not eat them if they're not in my house and they're not easy for me to access. And I know that can be challenging when we live with other people um, because it is hard to not 
have, um, it's just hard, right? Like, let's just face it, it is hard. Those foods are designed to be extremely addictive. Like you can't, you can only, you can't eat just one is real. It's real, it's really how they're designed. They boost our dopamine receptors and it's very hard to eat one. And then we have the memory for it, we want more. So if we have adequate protein throughout the day, it often really helps with cravings. And then we get rid of the refined sugar. And then we want to have healthy sources of carbohydrates at a meal of starches. And that really should just be about a quarter of our plate. So that's things like root vegetables or winter squash or whole beans or whole grains. And, um, you know, that's where that, the, that's how we want to get our sugars, a healthy way that has fiber and vitamins and minerals. Okay. So, you know, this is a much bigger conversation talking about blood sugar, but it really is a very connected and linked to high blood pressure. So whatever you can do to support yourself in eating less refined carbohydrates, the better, because the other thing that happens when we eat a lot of sugar, our body is going to try the best that it can to help us eliminate the excess sugar. So we're going to try to put it into the cells. We're going to try to turn it into fat. But as it's traveling through the blood, our kidneys are going to be like, all right, send it to the bladder and let's urinate it out. Let's get rid of the excess sugar. In fact, I don't know if you know this, but when doctors were first um, working on teaching or no, when sorry, when doctors, before we had all these sophisticated tests, doctors would actually like drink people's urine to see how sweet it was. And that's when they knew when people had sweet blood, that's when they knew they had diabetes. Doctors, <laughs> um, they don't do that today though. But what, what we do know is we will urinate out excess sugar in our blood, but guess what else we urinate out? The minerals that are traveling through the blood. So that means we urinate out magnesium and B vitamins and all kinds of vitamins and you know potassium that are so helpful for blood, for blood pressure. So we definitely want to make sure that we are not, um, you know, we, that, that our sugars aren't so high in the blood, we're urinating all our minerals because minerals, and, and this is gonna lead right into my fifth um, remedy. After that, I'll pause and answer any questions. So we're almost there. The fifth remedy is minerals. Like we need minerals. Magnesium is involved in over 300 enzymatic reactions in the body. And when we have ma adequate magnesium in the body, it helps our blood vessels to relax. It even helps our, um, our like, um, you know, helps our muscles of the digestive tract to relax. And sometimes people use magnesium as a laxative. Magnesium is so essential. And, you know, potassium is so important and B vitamins are all really important in the energy production and the heart health and, you know, relaxing the vessels. So we need to make sure we have adequate minerals and we get minerals from eating foods that come from the earth because plants pull magnesium and minerals up from the soil, right? So we need healthy soils with good microbiome in the soil, you know, to pull that up and like magnesium, I'll just tell you, this is kind of a cool thing. So greens are green because of chlorophyll and at the heart of the chlorophyll molecule is magnesium. So for plants, magnesium is kind of like our iron. So if plants don't have enough magnesium, they can't do that chlorophyll photosynthesis. So they'll just be like really deficient and kind of, you know, bleh. like we can get tired if we don't have enough iron. So the, the magnesium is what makes plants so green. So when we eat greens, we're getting more magnesium. Now, the thing that's so interesting is probably around 75 to 80% of Americans are deficient, probably almost worldwide, I would imagine, are deficient in magnesium. So most of us are walking around deficient in magnesium. But greens, legumes, nuts and seeds, those are all great ways of getting magnesium. And so we want to make sure, if, so if you're, you know, if you're saying, okay, I'm going to eat less starches and it's going to be a quarter of my plate. If you had a half to three quarters of your plate full of leafy greens and colorful vegetables, you would be winning because number one, when we naturally add more things in, we start eating less of the other things. And we start 
kind of, you know, our body will start to crave those things. And you start eating more of it. You're like, mm. I mean, you know, I'm a nutritionist. I didn't, have a, I didn't always eat like healthy. Like I had to learn, I kind of had the standard American diet growing up. And I, you know, I was, um, you know, sick when I was younger and, you know, food was my medicine literally. And I, you know, kind of like healed myself by changing how I ate and feeling started to feel amazing. And I was like, I need to learn what's been happening in my body. Cause this is great. I want to help other people. Um, but you know, so, so I didn't always eat like this. Right. And I remember like the first time I ate vegetables, you know, in college, you know, I ate some vegetables before that, but like new ones that I had never liked. And I remember calling my mom, I'm like, mom, I just had broccoli. It was delicious. You know, and I remember, you know, when I started realizing I was going back for seconds for the vegetables and that was felt like, wow, I've never gone back for seconds for the vegetables. It was Brussels sprouts. I remember exactly what it was. And I was kind of like, yeah, good job. Right. So we want to make sure that we are like, you know, we, once we start doing something and it starts making us feel good, our cravings start to change. And that is like wonderful thing. You know, I'm not drawn to some of the things that I grew up in, with that I know are not healthy. It's like, it's not even, it's, it's a no brainer. I'm just like, yeah, no, thank you. Like I'm not even attracted to it. Right. So we, we build that muscle of health over time. And that's something that, you know, just here at BioYouth, I'm so glad you guys are here and we'll do more like this if it's helpful for you. And if you do have any questions right now, you can pop them in the chat and we can, you can even also just unmute and we can talk about it. I do want to just let you know one little thing, um, just to say, like, thank you so much for being here um, and joining me for this call. And we'll keep talking. I'm happy to answer questions and talk more about this. I just want to tell you that if you decided that um, because you're here to um, as a bio youth customer, that if you wanted to uh, subscribe to any of our products, you would get 50% off the first month and then 20% off the list price online and secure your inventory so that every month your subscription comes in, you'll get 20% off the list price as long as you subscribe. You can call, you can order online and um, there is a little code. So I'm gonna give you like the code and the phone number if you wanted to call that order in. Um, and I'm also just gonna give you a link to the website. And then I'd love to see um, what questions you might have. And uh, you can you know, chat it to me right now or you can unmute if you're like, and you can even un you know, put your camera on so I could say hello to you. I'm more than happy to uh, say hi and answer any questions anybody might have. Does anybody have a question? Anyone? Or you can post it in the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question then. You could still unmute if you have one, but Based on the, what I recommended, I'm just gonna go back to what those, those five things were. Um, so I talked about getting enough hydration, getting vitamin D, the potential of food allergies, and also the connection between blood pressure and blood sugar, and the importance of minerals in the forms of the foods that we eat. I would love to ask you, like to, you could put it in the chat or unmute, what resonates the most for you and what do you feel like you um, would like to focus on, right? It's always important, I think, to kind of claim like, you know what, I'm gonna drink more water or I'm gonna fill in the blank. Like that resonated for me. That's what I can try on. Does anybody have, um, wanna put anything in the, in the chat just to share what that is? Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, everybody's being shy. Um, is there anything else that you would, and I could keep talking for a little bit. We can also, you know, wrap it up. Oh, yay, thank you. Controlling sugar, totally. That is a huge one. And um, and for, for all of us, really. I mean, 
I'm just going to speak to that for a few minutes because it is such an important piece of the puzzle. Um, you know, our sugar intake, uh, when, you know, when we're babies, the first flavor of food that we are introduced to is sweet. Like mama's milk is sweet and it's fat and sugar. And sweet is a building flavor. It like helps us to build our tissues as we grow. And, um, and it, so it's very comforting. And the emotion associated with sweet is love, right? It's, it's comforting. And so a lot of times that sweet is just even a reflection of like, oh, you know, I need that that love. Um, and it's also a reminder that we want to make sure we're getting healthy um, servings of sweet. And that can be with like, you know, even sometimes a sweet potato or last night I had roasted carrots with my dinner and it was this really nice sweet part of my dinner and it was very satisfying. So it's like, I'm not going to say, oh, I'm not going to have any sweet. Sometimes if I don't have any carbs, then I really crave sugar. But if I just have like healthy parts of uh, healthy carbohydrates, then I feel very satisfied. Um, and, you know, sweet cravings are often, um, you know, can be very emotional, can also even be like low levels of serotonin. So we might, you know, need to get a little bit more protein or sometimes even a nice walk or connecting with a friend can help us to boost our serotonin and be just, just as satisfied as whatever that sweet thing is. So we have to sometimes change what our sweets are gonna be. Um, and yeah, so, so thank you for sharing that. I think that is really important, especially when we start to understand that like when our sugars are in excess in our blood throughout our bloodstream, they, it does start to stick to our red blood cells and that really does thicken our blood. And that adds a lot of pressure to our heart and how it has to be. So, um, you know, that's probably one of the most common form reasons why blood pressure is high is because the meta metabolism, metabolic syndrome, right? Stemming from blood sugar. So if we can get to the root cause. And again, oftentimes, you know, we won't know that from our, um, from, you know, our doctor visits, it's not, we're, we don't, the doctor doesn't always make that connection for us, but hopefully me making it for you gives you some more understanding of that, um, that connection. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, um, I hope that was helpful. And I am super grateful to see uh, everybody who's here and uh, really appreciate the opportunity. And if there's another topic that you would like us to talk about, um, we'll be doing another one of these next month. You can you know, email us, um, you know, reply to one of our emails or you could post it in the chat right now. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll be doing this again next month. So I hope you can join us and thank you so much for being here. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. So thanks everybody. Bye. Oh, I see a question. Um, is it safe to take this with my existing medication? So, you know, um, because I don't know what your medication that you are on is, um, I would just say that would be a great question to ask your doctor. Yeah, because that's that is kind of out of my league to be able to answer that. Um, but ask your doctor, and if it is, then that would be great. Um, and and then just as a reminder too, if you go to the Bio Youth Labs and you use the Bio Fifty, B I O Fifty, and you order anything and sign up for a subscription, you'll get fifty percent off, and then you'll lock in a twenty percent off price for um, as long as you're a subscriber. And you know the other thing is if you know, supplies are ever low, subscribers always have the priority of uh, making sure that, uh, not that things are low, but it's just you, you, the inventory is set aside for the subscribers first is a better way to say it. So you could check out Bio Youth Labs and, um, and yes, thank you so much. And I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you next week or next month. <laughs> okay. Bye everybody.